Okay everybody, today I'm going to be testing out the amazing low thermal conductivity properties of NASA heat tiles. So in order to test this, what I'm going to be doing with the tile is pouring molten lava on it. Molten rock, I'm going to pour it on it and see if I can actually destroy the tile by heat. And then in addition to this, when the tile is red hot, I'm going to actually try to touch it. Now what should happen is the thermal conductivity of the heat tiles should be so low that even though it's red hot, when I touch it, it shouldn't burn me because it can't transfer the heat from the red hot tile to my finger. Okay, here's my tile right here. Let's pour the lava on it and see what happens. See if the tile can actually stay protected in the lava. Okay, the tile is under the lava. Okay, let's see what happens now. Okay, the tile is under there. Should we flip over the lava and see if it survived? And see what the tile looks like. Hey, it survived. It just had some black char on it. It just had some black char on it from the paper here. But there it is. Okay, the question is, can I touch it? <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Did you just touch it? <laughs> I touched it. It didn't hurt. One, two. Wait, wait, wait. It's hot around let me, it. Let me get on the other side. It's really hot around it, but one, two, three. <laughs> Is it hot? I don't know. I'm just nervous to touch it longer. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, I touched it. Look, I can touch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not burning me. That's crazy. <laughs> huh. What's interesting now is you'll see that the only part that's still glowing red is the part that was covered by the aerogel there. That's because it's thermally insulative, so everything else has cooled off except for right where the aerogel was. Wait, did you just touch it to that? Yeah, it's, it's very hot. It's lava. It's just not... So it's still very hot. But Can if you I... touch the black part? Uh, no. <laughs> so, um, it's... That's amazing. Okay, here's our final product. The Aerogel Thermal Tile completely surrounded with solid rock now. So it didn't destroy it at all. It's just kind of cracked because I was scraping off the burned paper on top of it. But other than that, it's completely intact, not melted, and it protected my finger from getting burned from the red hot, hot lava behind it. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in here. Okay, there it is. Now let's try to heat it up to red hot. It doesn't burn me. No way. I can totally touch it. <laughs> 
Now these thermal tiles are what protect space shuttles when they re-enter the atmosphere. Because upon re-entry, the space shuttle is moving so fast that it compresses the air and the air rises to an extremely high temperature. Now these heat tiles actually get red hot in the process. But what's interesting is that even though they're red hot, the shuttle itself or the space capsule itself doesn't actually heat up that much inside. And that's because those tiles have extremely low thermal conductivity. And the reason they have low thermal conductivity is because they're made from something called an aerogel. Now aerogels can be made from a lot of different materials. The tile that I have today is made from silicon. Now the thermal tiles that NASA uses, they're a little bit different material. They're not as brittle as the one I used here, but they have very similar thermal properties. Now what's interesting about how aerogels are made is the final product is an extremely low density solid. And the reason that it has such a low thermal conductivity, meaning the reason that it can't conduct heat that much, is because of its extremely small pore size. So these pores are filled with air, and these pores are usually smaller than the mean free path of the air inside of them. And so that means normally air can transfer heat pretty fast because it creates these thermal currents. And so convection happens and it starts looping around. It can transfer the heat pretty fast. But what's interesting about aerogel is that it even has a lower thermal conductivity than even stagnant air. And that's because the pores inside of the aerogel are actually smaller than the mean free path of air. And so the molecules of air just can't bump into each other as much. And so basically they can't transfer their heat across the surface of the aerogel very fast. Okay, now that was amazing. It didn't burn me at all. And what's even cooler is that now I have a tile of aerogel completely surrounded with solid rock that was previously molten lava, but it didn't destroy the aerogel at all. The reason I wanted to try this is because I recently saw a video of NASA engineers handling red hot thermal tiles that they had in a furnace and you could actually touch them. So I wanted to see if I could do it at home and sure enough, it works out if you put it in hot lava, you can still touch the thermal tile or the aerogel inside of there. Okay, today I'm going to be putting solid air in my vacuum chamber. And I'm not actually sure what it will do in the vacuum chamber, it might do nothing. But either way, afterwards I'm going to crush it in my hydraulic press because I want to see how much of it was actually solid material and how much was gas. Okay, I've got it zoomed in on my aerogel here. So I'm not quite sure what will happen here. I know there's a gas inside of it. I don't know if it'll just shatter or what it will do here. It might do nothing. Let's check it out. Aerogel in a vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. <laughs> So at full vacuum and not much is happening here. Okay, let's let the air back in. Probably gonna blow it all over. All right, let's see how much actual material besides the gas is left over after we crush this. Okay, aerogel crushed in a hydraulic press. Three, two, one. Here's the pieces of aerogel that broke kind of like glass. So it broke like really ultra low density glass. Really weird to crush it. It just kind of disintegrates in your hand. So if I collect a bunch of the powder, it's just kind of this white powder afterwards. So that entire solid piece there was just almost an undetectable amount of powder. 
So thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And check out theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription boxes. You can get a vacuum chamber and we also are selling the self-pouring liquid as well right now. So check it out at theactionlab.com. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.